it guys uh, I hope you're doing well this week I sure am it's cold here in Toronto and I'm and I'm glad that you're here with me I'm glad that you're enjoying my sermons and watching them and um, um, sharing them and and getting getting what God intends out of them it's so amazing to me Anyway, um, this sermon is called, uh, Triple Threat, The Power and Gift of, I'm sorry, The Power and Gift of, I Love You, and the power and gift of forgiveness. But the YouTube sermon title will, st will say um, triple threat. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do and I thank you for what you're already doing. Lord Jesus, teach us, reveal yourself to us in a wonderful way, Lord Jesus. Speak to me, speak to me. I give your name all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, th this sermon came from the show, the show The Good Doctor. It was, I was watching this week's epi episode of The Good Doctor. The Good Doctor is about a surgeon. It centers around a hospital. It's a medical drama. But it's about a surgeon um, with autism, um, I believe, um, where he fits on the spectrum as Asperger's, but I'm not completely sure about that. Anyway, on, okay, it centers around Sean, who is the one with autism. And in this week's episode, Sean was doing a surgery and how Sean's mind works is very analytical, very um, matter of fact and not emotional. And it's like the whole series is how Sean coped with um, me being a doctor. He's, a, he's an amazing doctor. Um, and and his disability works for him uh, when he, as he's going through through his red his red his red his residency. Sorry about that. And on this week's episode, he he was doing his first. He was redoing his first surgery because his last first surgery didn't go well. He didn't get a chance to do it. Uh, that's a long story. So anyway, this week is his second first surgery. And it, and it was going great. Everything was going great. And um, he needed, in the middle of the surgery, he needed some tool. Um, some clamp or something and he asked the nurse to hand him the clamp and because of his um, Asperger syndrome he or his personality he needs things a certain way he likes things a certain way and if he doesn't get them that way he sometimes can't handle changes or whatever. Um, he uh, he went crazy on on the, this poor nurse um, and kicked her out of the operating room. And then his boss said to him, Sean apologized and 
he he saw this he saw the nurse in the cafeteria, and instead of just simply saying "I'm sorry for going ballistic on you because of a clamp," he went nuts on her. He started trying to explain historically why the clamp is supposed to be given this way, not that way. Anyway, he further made the situation worse by trying, starting to do that. And at the end of the episode, it turned out that this nurse filed a complaint against him for harassment. I think it was harassment. And his boss said, um, if anything like this happens again, uh, your residency will be terminated. And I started thinking about um, the power of and gift of I'm sorry. If Sean had have just said um, to the nurse, I'm sorry for the way I acted. I shouldn't have acted like that. It would have have um, went into a complaint, but because he didn't and went all further ballistic on her, it the situation got bigger. And what I was thinking about, um, I'm sorry, sometimes Sometimes when you're dealing with issues, you try and just, um, when, when I say you're, I mean when humans are dealing with issues, we try and explain, we try and do this, we try and cover up our lies and, and misgivings and our fear, instead of just saying, you know what, I screwed up, I'm sorry. Um, and when you say I'm sorry and mean it, it could be the most powerful thing ever. Because everyone, every decent thinking, feeling human being understands that we all are not perfect. But sometimes our pride gets in the way. We are afraid of people thinking we're stupid. We're afraid of people thinking we we don't know um, any better. We're, we're afraid and we let our pride get in the way. And because we let our pride get in the way, we just mess up. We just totally, um, we just totally blow everything out of proportion. We try to explain, we try to excuse, we try to make ourselves look good when just a simple, I'm sorry, I screwed up, or I messed up, I shouldn't have done that. And some people just don't take responsibility. And the Lord is saying today, just take responsibility for your actions. If you screwed up, and if you, and if you messed up, and if you, uh, made somebody uh, cry or if you didn't do something that you were supposed to do say I'm sorry I made a mistake and when you say I'm sorry it can open the door to forgiveness it can open the door to um, just healing the words I'm sorry can heal and you know you know how most offenses start? Most offenses start with a lack of I'm sorry. I'll say that again. Most offenses start with a lack of I'm sorry. And when you say I'm sorry, healing can begin. Um, trust can be built. It, it will take work to rebuild. I'm not saying sorry is the end of it. 
I'm saying sorry is just the beginning. What the person needs to feel like you're remorseful that you know what you did and um, saying I'm sorry doesn't make you uh, a less of a woman or less of a man. It, it makes you more a person that can admit that they're wrong is so powerful and we all make mistakes beloved you just have to come clean with it and say you know what I screwed up I'm I'm at fault and then you have the other people the other people like me um, who uh, don't who take too much responsibility for other people's actions like they, somebody else can do something and they're like, oh, I'm sorry for him. Oh, I'm sorry for her. Or, oh, I'm sorry for this person. And the Lord is saying for those people, let them take responsibility. Because you cannot carry a person for that long. You cannot sustain a person for that long. You're not God. You are not designed to carry them. You are not designed to um, to be their sustainer. Only God can sustain them. And if you and if you keep on saying I'm sorry for them and keep up keep on cleaning up their messes, they will never learn. It's so funny uh, going back to the good doctor. Uh, this week, oh, last week, uh, when Sean said, when this whole thing happened with Sean, his boss um, kind of tried to pick up for him because she understands his disability and whatever, and the attending surgeon says, you got to let him stand on his own. You got to let him learn this on his own. Despite of his disability, you can be there for him and do all this, but you've got to stop um, making it easy for him because when he's at the regular hospital, he won't have it easy. He'll have to learn just like every other doctor has to learn. He'll have to deal with what every other doctor has to deal with. And I sense that there is somebody out there today that keeps on picking up for their adult son or daughter and saying, oh, I'm sorry, they didn't mean to do that. Oh, I'm sorry, they didn't mean to... Uh, do that or I'm um, sorry let me cover this for them and the Lord is saying stop covering for them let them take their own responsibility for their own messes because if they don't take responsibility at 16 they won't take responsibility at 26 they won't take responsibility at 36 46 and up and then you'll have a lot of adults who do not take responsibility. And that's their problem. Everybody wants to blame somebody instead of blaming themselves. And they, and when you come to the essence of who you are and say, I did this and I need to change, then as I said before, healing can begin. Forgiveness can begin. And it is powerful. I'm, when you really mean the words, I'm sorry, it can open doors. It can open healing. Because what it does, it frees the other person to say, I'm sorry too. And you can build a relationship. I'm sorry. The words, I'm sorry, um, can be um, the start of building blocks to a relationship. Many relationships, many marriages break down because of a lack 
of taking responsibility and a lack of saying I'm sorry and really meaning it. And some people say I'm sorry, but they only say it as a getting out of jail free card because they think that, oh, I'm sorry, they're just going to get out of jail free. But gen if you mean the words I'm sorry genuinely and the people kn know through your actions that you're not just saying I'm sorry, but you will do better, that opens up a relationship. It heals a relationship. So you cannot just um, say I'm sorry. You've got to say it with conviction, say it with power, and then demonstrate it with actions. So if the, let, let's, let's take a cheating spouse, for example. So let's say um, a husband or wife was cheating on them, was cheating on their spouse. And the other party, like the husband or the wife, um, come, came clean to their partner. It is not enough to say, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. Along with that, I'm sorry, needs to come action. So after you say, I'm sorry, you need to take action to either fix the problem or, or show the person that you've changed. And beloved, we are all human. We are all working through this thing together and there's no shame in saying, I don't know how to do this. I'm working through this. And a lot of us are embarrassed to say that we're working through that and we're working through things. But when we say those things, we are free to really be who God created us to be. A lot of offenses can be solved with the word, words, I'm sorry, forgive me, and I love you. So now I've talked about I'm sorry, and, I, and now I'm going to talk about forgiveness. Now, um, a lot of people think uh, forgiveness is just the get out of jail free card again, like I'm sorry. But it, it is actually not. It causes you to be free more than the other person. It causes you to feel whole more than the person that caused the offense. Or if you cause the offense, it causes you to be healed. Because what, what people don't understand is sometimes when you uh, knowingly offend somebody or do something like trifling or um, do something in malice or in fear or in terrible to somebody, they don't understand that the person that did this awful thing, they're hurting and they're angry so they want to bring vengeance on the other person. But I, I'm saying that the vengeance that you're bringing on the other person is only hurting you. Is only hurting you. And if you want people to forgive you, you need to not only ask for forgiveness, but you need, again, to um, support that with action. So, again, just like with, with um, I'm sorry, you need to not only say the words, but support it with action. And a lot of unforgiveness is in the hearts of people. A lot of hidden offenses are in the hearts of people and God wants people to be free today. Free from friends, free from malice, free from 
every, everything. And the Lord said, if you have something against your brother, don't come into church with me. He said, go make it right with your brother and then we can worship and then you could worship me with freedom in your heart. And I know, and I, I think that um, unforgiveness is so, is so prevalent both in the church and out of the church. Because when something happens to you, you feel so hurt, you feel so angry, you feel so, you just feel like you want to kill somebody, you want to swear, you want to make them hurt the way they hurt you. You want to make them pay. But making them pay, beloved, is making you pay. That it's hurting you, this unforgiveness. It's giving you cancer. It's giving you, um, making you not sleep well. It's giving you all these illnesses. All these illnesses. I was, um, watching something that they said m most of these illnesses that were, were, seeing like certain cancers, heart disease, and all this physical thing is due to things like unforgiveness, anger, and all that. Because what happens is it's stored in your body. And when anger and unforgiveness gets stored in your body, it has nowhere to go. So it starts, it starts festering and creating tumors and creating high blood pressure and creating all of these things that um, type 2 diabetes and sugars get higher and things things start getting under what because your body says I need to let this go but there's no way to let it go being offended and being hateful and being unforgiving is not helping anyone. Um, but you, I've heard, I've heard T.D. Jakes uh, say unforgiveness is like this. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Beloved, don't drink any more poison. Let it out. Whatever the person did to you, whether it was cheat on you, whether it was do something in the friendship, or whether it was stab you in the back, the other person is not doing anything. It's not even thinking about you. It's totally going on with their, li with their lives, and you're there having heart palpitations in the middle of the night. Uh, getting all these illnesses, high blood pressure, hypertension, uh, diabetes, type 2. You're getting all these illnesses because you have unforgiveness in yourself and it has nowhere to go. So release that today. Release it to God and release it, it to the person. And if you can't, if you feel you can't, speak to the person because it's horrible or if the person has died write a letter to them write a letter write those feelings express those feelings cry so scream swear do whatever to express those feelings even in writing and and when you do that in writing first it clears your head when you do it in or sometimes what I do when I'm mad or or um, upset you know what I do sometimes is I I because I can't write but I can record I have this sound thing on my computer that I can record things so I record everything I record everything that I'm feeling, I cry, I scream, I swear, I just let it all out. 
and I listen to it back and then listening to it back releases things for me. It releases things so I can think clearly. A lot of people, when they have unforgiveness, they confront the person with anger and hurt and it just makes everything worse. And so what I would say is when you're feeling unforgiveness or offense, let it out some way, write it down or um, write it down or record it or let it go. Don't hold it in as malice and when you can write it down, read it back, record it, listen to, listen to it back, it, it gives you clarity enough to handle the situation. And it, and um, before I said uh, if the person is dead or uh, you don't feel comfortable talking to the person who did that, now I'm changing it to even if you can do that with the, with the person, um, write it down or record it anyway because it gives you clarity of thought, clarity of mind because once the anger is out, you can think clearly. Once that initial burst of energy and adrenaline and seeing red is out, you can, you can process clearly and think through it rationally and come to the person and say, look, uh, this hurt me, this did this to me, um, can we work it out? And if the person is resistant to it, let them be. You have a clear conscience and you the only person you can control is you. And the last one is the power and the the power and gift of I love you. A lot of people neglect to say these words to the people they love and the people they care about. And I'm one of those people that you kind of uh, take people for granted and not really tell them how much you care. People need to know how much you care. If there's any, if there's any mothers listening to, if there's any kids with moms and dads and aunties and uncles and sisters and brothers. They need to know how much you love them, how much you care, how much you care about them, how much they're appreciated. A lot of people say, oh, I don't need appreciation. I don't need this. I don't need that. But everybody needs that. Like, and it feels so good when somebody sends a surprise email or writes a letter to someone or does something for someone to show that they care and I'm praying for you, um, I love you ministry. It's so uplifting to the person and they may not know that they need it, but they do. They may not say it, but they do because the thing is, us as human beings, is we're so, um, we so don't like to show emotion sometimes. Um, like to show how much we, we, um, need people. Some of us are, like, this world is so autonomous. When I say autonomous, I mean we're so, um, by ourselves. It's all about me, that's let's do me but they don't realize when they're doing themselves um that they need just someone to say you know what i appreciate you you're doing a great job i love you i appreciate what you do i appreciate who you are and the lord said his second commandment is love your neighbor as you love yourself but unfortunately, a lot of people don't love themselves. And self-love is lacking so much in this society. And that's why 
a lot of people can't say I love you because they don't know how to because they don't love themselves. So the first step in saying those words and meaning them is finding self-love. And self-love doesn't come from yourself. It comes from the Father who loves you and who created you and who knows you. And I think w once you find that, that self-love for yourself, once you embrace how much you are loved, you can begin to love yourself and those around you. And how you begin to love yourself is go to the one who is love. He didn't create love. God is love. And he is, is waiting to just love you. And the last thing that the Lord wants me to say is lay down your weapons. Lay down your weapons. A lot of people have emotional weapons that they use like manipulation and and anger and just uh, distrust and all of this stuff that they use to get their way all this negative stuff um, the silent treatment uh, they love to cause drama they love to use fake tears, they love to make people feel sorry for them, and there are all kinds of emotional weapons. And the Lord is saying, lay down your weapons and just be you. Lay down your weapons and just be you. He's saying, lay down your weapons and just be naked before people emotionally. And sometimes, we're just afraid to be naked and vulnerable in front of people. And I know we need to be careful. I've said this many times. You need to be careful and cautious about who you're naked and vulnerable around. But find a group of people where you can be naked and vulnerable around because it's so necessary to find a place where you can lay down your weapons. A lot of people are carrying hurts and pain and all this negative stuff around and there are they they are like, oh I'm just fine. But they're not fine. They're just hiding it. And the Lord says, stop burying your pain. Stop pretending it doesn't matter. Say that it does matter. Find someone to confide in. Find a friend or a counselor or a pastor or a priest. Find someone that you can depend on to help you work through that those negative feelings. Find someone uh, to help you lay down that arsenal of warfare that you've got going on. Those tools that you've been uh, using to manipulate people and to get your way and the games you've been playing, the Lord said, they're coming to an end. You, It comes to a point where you can only play games and manipulate and deceive and be jealous and be all that. For, for a certain time but there there is a time when it will come to an end and you'll have to take responsibility for your actions and so when I talk about uh, triple threat I mean when we have the gift of uh, I'm sorry when we embrace the power of I'm sorry, we can go further than we ever dreamed. When we embrace the power and have the gift of forgiveness,
we can go farther than we ever dreamed. When we embrace the power and have the gift of I, of I love you, we can embrace, we can have more power than we ever dreamed. And if, if we can only embrace the power of just love and how love is the strongest emotion, it's the most healing emotion. And it's not a weak emotion like a lot of people say, but it's emotion that heals, emotion that restores, and an emotion um, that delivers. Lord Jesus, give us your power, give us your strength, give us your peace. Lord God, we need to lay down our weapons before you. We need to lay down. We we need to lay down our arsenal and just come to you and say, "Here we are, Lord, and you can clean us up." Lord Jesus, help us to do that today. And I think that's what we need to do before we lay it down on Facebook, before we confess it to any pastor or any friends. We need to lay it lay it down before God. We need to lay it down at his feet and let him restore us. A lot of people are carrying around hurt and pain and unforgiveness and lack of love um, for other people. And the Lord is saying, I need you to lay it down. The reason why we're not seeing what we should be seeing in our Christian walk is because we haven't been real with God. We haven't, we haven't laid down our arsenal and our weapons. And how we are physically and, and is how we are emotionally. And the Lord really wants us to lay it down before him and say, Lord, here we are, fix us. But a lot of people are afraid to do that because they're afraid of what if God won't love me? Coming, I'm coming. Rachel? Hold on, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. Sorry about that. When life interrupts, it interrupts. What can you do? Um, all I was saying was um, laying down your arsenal of emotional weapons. Whatever emotional weapons you're using, lay them down and come before the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, here I am. Quite, quite often I find the um, the emotional weapons we use with people are the same weapons that we try to use with God. And today he's saying, don't try and use that cover up with me. Don't try and use that emotional manipulation with me. Just come to me as you are. Come to me the dirty mess you are. Come to me whatever you find yourself in. And don't be afraid to say, Lord, I did this. Lord, I'm going through this. Lord, help me with this issue. And he will help you. He's just waiting for this from you. And when you, when you actually stop compartmentalizing God and let him go into your life and, and do everything, 
He will take you through a process. Yes, he will. It will be hard. It will be trying. You'll be like, Lord, what are you doing? But at the end, he will get the glory and you will be victorious. And that's all he wants from you is to be victorious. So stop pretending that things don't bother you and embrace his forgiveness. Embrace his love and embrace his repentance, which is the same, which is a biblical way of saying, I'm sorry. And you turn away and you have better actions with his repentance. So, and with your repentance, embrace the repentance that he tried, that he died so that you could have freely. Embrace all that he has for you. Don't shy away from it. And these three, which are the, the power and gift of I'm sorry, and the power and gift of forgiveness, and the power of gift and gift of I love you, are a triple threat. So that's why I call this um, video triple threat is because it is a triple threat when you get when you get these main things down the the world can't say anything to stop you no one can say anything against you they can say it but it won't prompt you but, but it won't but it won't get you it won't phase you if they say it. So, because th those are things that I'm living. I had to learn how to forgive. I had to learn how to uh, say I love you. I, learned, I had to learn how to say I'm sorry. And don't put the blame on everyone else um, but me. So I'm not telling you things from a place that I don't know. I'm telling you things from a place that I've lived and I hope you can walk in, in the freedom that I'm just now discovering with this triple threat. Uh, so guys, thank you, I love you. See you next week, bye. The, the reason I called it a power and a gift is because these three entities, um, forgiveness, I'm sorry, and saying I love you, give you power, give you ammunition to succeed, give you the motivation that you need to go through life and be the person that you are. The reason that each three of them are a gift is they're a gift that you give to yourself and they're a gift that you give to other people. So we often think of power, the power of these words and take, taking your power back, but each of them, when used correctly, along with words and actions, can, can be a, will be a gift to somebody else and to God and to the people around you. And they'll, they'll make you a person that is open to experiences, a person that is open to, li to, lives, to life's triumphs and challenges. So I'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Sorry for the interruption again. But when life interrupts, preaching still goes on. Bye, I'll see you later.